Most of it is entrenched in metaphor. Most of it is probably entrenched in metaphor. And that's because there are so many layers to the life in which we experience. And I know that we lose sight of we lose sight of the depth and complexity. And I get it. We all have jobs, families to attend to. We have things we got to do. We got to avoid death. We got to survive. We have to do mundane, tedious things. But there's an added layer. And the layer doesn't even necessarily have to be beautiful in and of itself. But it's definitely there. A layer of complexity. And a layer of abstraction. Or multiple layers and levels of abstraction. And that's why I say most of it is probably metaphor. And the reason why I think this is important is because we lose sight of the metaphor that is everywhere. In everything. The deeper layers that exist that we ignore at our own peril. I think of the show Mr. Robot, which I feel like I have an affinity for because of the way in which it taught me about the different layers of my mind. The way in which it dove and delved into the unconscious mind. The, the way that show did. And how powerful that honestly is to think about because I had my own levels of dissociation in my own past where it's like I almost became a different person. And it was because the unconscious mind was representing all of these added layers. And so when I watched Mr. Robot multiple times, I realized there were so many other layers, levels and la layers in which I was missing because I couldn't put a name to it. I couldn't put a word to it. And I feel the same way when I'm reading a good book. When I'm looking at language as a metaphor, not just a means of communication or symbols, but literally a metaphor in and of itself. The added layers of abstraction, the layers that are here. And I bring this up because metaphor really is entrenched not just in the world, but in my own life. And I also entrench metaphor in my own mindset. And the reason is because I think there's so much there to unpack and to explore. The metaphors don't have to be spiritual, though they can be. I myself don't want to limit any kind of association, but I also don't want it to be entrenched in social norms and in convention and in the ways in which we're supposed to look at them or look at life for that matter. And so the reason why I mention this is like with watching Mr. Robot or thinking about a good book, something that I'm reading, there are all these layers and metaphors that I want to untangle and that I want to explore. And it's super fun trying to figure that out. Super fun trying to figure out what the layers are and what they indicate. And I don't think, I mean, I think probably the big way of describing this is like, I don't think that anything that we do in life is arbitrary. It becomes that way because it becomes mundane and ordinary and routine. And so we miss, we miss the connotations and the associations and the depth that's there. But I also look at it as like, life is not superficial. Obviously we get caught up in the superficiality of it because that's what we experience but there's so much more to it than you would expect and something that I think is so often ignored. And the reason why I think it's ignored is because we don't really know what to do with it in the first place. We're scared of it. We're wanting to limit it. We're wanting to limit what's true. We're wanting to believe things that are ready made and easier to believe instead of delving into the unknown territories of life, the unknown regions. And I think about it because I think if I was gonna phrase it in a quick, concise summary, I would say that the meaning is everywhere and that everything that we do is not arbitrary because there is this deeper layer of abstraction or metaphor underlying everything. And because those things are there, we want to pay attention to them. We don't want to ignore them. They're there and they can show us amazing things. And we want to be able to acknowledge them because if we don't, if we don't acknowledge them, then we miss the whole point of what life is about and what makes life so beautiful. And this is why I think it's so powerful to delve into the metaphors surrounding us, involved in everything that we do, because nothing that we do is superficial. And it doesn't even have to take on a spiritual connotation, though it can, but it's also the whole metaphor of like, there's so much that we miss happening day to day, but that nothing that we do is actually arbitrary. And again, it's easy to see it as being arbitrary because it's what we're used to, but I would say added to this interpretation of mine is a whole notion of meaning as well. And meaning is a difficult thing because when we talk about patterns, we often talk about how they are, the human mind constructs patterns where there are none. And this is often an argument to embrace randomness, which makes sense, randomness and chaos. 
because it may be true that if we got to the true nature of the world, it's all chaotic. There's no order. There's no underlying force uh, that brings it all together. But on the other hand, meaning itself is a construction, but I don't feel like in and of itself it's just a construction because I see it as there being a lot more to it than just something that's arbitrary or something that we invent for ourselves because we feel like we have to, something that we make up because we feel like it's what we need to do. And the reason why this is important is because I don't think meaning is completely arbitrary. I know that we talk about in this kind of nihilistic lens of like, well, if we create meaning, is it real meaning? And that, that's fair, but it's a difficult argument to try to understand or to even make sense of. And the reason is because the argument itself isn't helpful. If we assume that the meaning isn't purposeful, that there isn't an actual reason for the meaning, then we end up in a difficult place because we don't want to acknowledge the meaning that actually exists. We don't want to acknowledge the meaning that is there and that teaches us a lot of interesting things. And so it's easy to dismiss the meaning that is there because we're so easily able to view it as just being this construction in this nihilistic sense where there's no meaning and nothing, like true meaning doesn't exist. But the reason why I say this is when we talk about metaphors being entrenched in so many things, the way that I see it is that's what we want to delve into. That's why metaphors are such a fascinating rhetorical tool because we realize that one thing that's being stated includes deeper layers to analyze and to think about. And that's the whole pleasure of metaphors, especially in an artistic sense, is that we see the world in a new way and we see the things that are there that we can't easily quantify or put into terms. And it's interesting because this is probably true even coming from like a scientific perspective, or at least when analyzing the scientific perspective, I should say, which is that when we look at things as being strictly scientific, we don't look at the levels or the layers beneath it. And that's because we're looking at explicit extreme fact. And because it's just fact, we're missing out on any kind of added layer. And science is supposed to be that way, right? Because obviously it's not a bad thing. We're trying to capture the facts of the world. We're trying to verify what we experience and see, or not even what we experience, what we observe, to be able to make sense of it. But the reason why this is so incredibly important to consider is like, our experience in the world is not strictly scientific. And there are added layers that we want to tease apart. There's an artistic element to life. And I honestly think that's where the beauty is, is that there's that artistic element and that aesthetic element and that metaphorical, beautiful element for us to explore. And I want to explore that realm more. And it's honestly because I think it's important, because I think it matters. I think that we don't want to lose track of the metaphors that underlie and the meaning that can be found there. And the metaphors really could go down infinitely for us to explore all of these layers that bring, in my mind, an added sense of meaning and purpose. And maybe this is a little bit lofty of a goal to describe things in this term or in these terms, but I think it's super important because we don't want to miss out on the deeper reality that encompasses everything around us. We don't want to miss out on the meaning that we can find. So yeah, metaphor. I'm Phoenix. I hope you enjoyed this discussion. I hope that you'll check out my other videos and check out my books. I'll put the link to my author page in the description. And yeah, I'm Phoenix, and I will see you around.